Following reminders. In order to maintain the solemnity of our Eucharistic celebration, please turn off or switch to silent mode all mobile phones and electronic devices. Please do this now. Thank you. We have designated photographers for this afternoon's occasion. Kindly refrain from standing up and taking pictures while the Mass is going on. Pictures will be made available online in the coming days. Thank you very much. Check one, two. the following reminders. In order to maintain the solemnity of our Eucharistic celebration, please turn off or switch to silent mode all mobile phones and electronic gadgets. Please do this now. Thank you. 
we have designated photographers for this afternoon's occasion. Kindly refrain from standing up and taking pictures while the Mass is going on. Pictures will be made available online in the coming days. We will begin the celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist in a while. Thank you very much. Oh 
our academic year. Last September 6, 2022, at our Mass of the Holy Spirit, we welcomed the community to our new academic year, invoking the Holy Spirit's guidance. Today, we ask for God's blessing upon the graduates as the community sends them forth as missionaries with the commission in the words of St. Ignatius to go and set the world on fire. Our main presider and homilist is the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown B.D. Joining him are the very Reverend Father Primitivo Verai of the Society of Jesus, Provincial Superior of the Philippine Jesuits, and the Vice Chancellor of LST. Father Enrico Eusebio of the Society of Jesus, LST President. Father Rohel Aniceto Abais of the Society of Jesus, LST Vice President for Academic Affairs. And other priest faculty members, formators, and friends. Today, May 24, is the memorial of Our Lady of the Way, Santa Maria de la Strada. This image of Our Lady was greatly loved by Saint Ignatius of Loyola, his early companions, and Jesuits today. After establishing the Society of Jesus in 1540, Pope Paul III gave the first church to St. Ignatius and his companions in February 1541. The name of the church was Santa Maria de la Strada. The image is enshrined today in the round chapel of the Gesù, the mother church of the Jesuits in Rome. Let us now rise and join the choir in singing the entrance song. Oh, <laughs> 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that all I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, in my fault, in my fault, in my most great fault. Therefore, I ask us as Mary of every virgin, all the angels and saints, and my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have been pleased to gladden the world by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we pray, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may receive the joys of everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus, we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way, he opened for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and in absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope. For he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stay away from our assembly, but encourage one another, and this all the more as you see the day drawing near. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees with all their hearts, they seek him. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have laid down your precepts, and to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm to ke in keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I may keep them to the end. Grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Please stand. Yeah. 
Happy are you, Holy Virgin Mary, and most worthy of all praise. For from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God. Hallelujah, 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went, went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for me, as your apostolic nuncio, it gives me a lot of joy and happiness to be here for the 24th Baccalaureate Mass as part of the commencement exercises of the Ecclesiastical Faculty of Loyola School of Theology here in this beautiful and historic Oratory of St. Ignatius in the Loyola House of Studies. I greet Bishop Tobias, who has joined us for our celebration, and of course, Father Primitivo Virai, the Provincial Superior, of the Philippine Jesuits, who's also the Vice Chancellor of LST, Father, Father Enrico Eusebio, the President of LST, Sister Maria Anicia B. Co, commencement speaker this afternoon. I was supposed to come here last summer for the Mass of the Holy Spirit, but it was canceled and then postponed because of the fear of a typhoon, which actually never really materialized. So the typhoon didn't happen. The Mass was rescheduled, but I arrived almost a year later here today to celebrate the Baccalaureate Mass for all of you, especially those of you who are receiving academic degrees today, and it gives me so much joy to be with you. The letter to the Hebrews that we've heard read is a beautiful introduction our theme this afternoon, which is the importance of theology, the gift of theology. Think of those words. Therefore, since through the blood of Jesus, we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way. By the new and living way, he opened for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. 
the words of the letter to the Hebrews, which reflect on the image of the temple in Jerusalem with its holy of holies, where only the high priest could enter beyond the veil, through the veil, on the Day of Atonement. The task of theology, brothers and sisters, is the study of revelation. And what does revelation literally mean? Revelatio. In Latin, it means unveiling, removing the veil, or we can in a certain sense say going through the veil. That is what the task of theology is, to meditate, to study, to pass through the veil into the Holy of Holies. Speaking of Revelation, the great Jesuit Cardinal Jean Daniel said that Revelation is the work of God alone. Man, and today we'd say human beings, contribute nothing to Revelation, nor does it belong to us. Revelation is a pure gift. It is, Cardinal Daniel Luke said, it is in itself infallible, true in a sense which can be applied only to God himself. Revelation, this unveiling, this revealing, is God's action in our regard. And Jesus is this revelation of God. Jesus is the unveiling of God. Jesus is the work of God coming to us and giving us, as we heard in the reading from the letter to the Hebrews, a new and living way. That word way is so important for us at this time, isn't it? Hodos, hodos, the way. Jesus is that living way goes through the veil. Jesus opens for us that way with him, go through the veil. Hodos, as all of us know, is the word in Greek for way, for path, for via, for strada in Italian. And of course, as all of us know, as we do theology, we don't do it alone. We do it together. It's a soon hodos. The Sunhodos, the synodal path of doing theology. We follow Jesus Hodos together with our brothers and sisters. And that's why it's so beautiful for your graduation that you're gathered together, because together we follow this way, this synodal way, which has a name and a face. It is Jesus, the unveiling of God. Hodos is a journey in communion, a sunados, a synodal journey, in this new and living way going through the veil. That leads us to three points that I'd like to make about theology this afternoon. First, theology begins from faith. Begins from faith. The famous Fides Querens Intellectum of St. Anselm in the Proslogion. The faith is the beginning of theology, faith seeking understanding. The point is that we as believers don't seek to understand so that we can believe, but rather we believe so that we can understand. For unless we've already believed, we wouldn't understand. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church talking about this Fides queres, queres intellectum, faith seeking understanding. It says it's intrinsic to faith that a believer desires to know better the one in whom he has put his faith and to understand better what God has revealed. A more penetrating knowledge will in turn call forth a greater faith increasingly set afire by love. So this penetrating knowledge, this knowledge goes through the veil into the Holy of Holies. This is what the theological hodos is, and this is why it's intrinsic to the life of the church, so important for the life of the church. So first, theology begins from faith, from the gift of faith. 
And this idea that theology, as the catechism says, this turn, call forth greater faith in us, will increasingly set fire to our hearts in love, leads us to a second point about theology, this idea of love. That theology requires practice or praxis in the Greek. Theology requires us to act, requires us and calls us to be set afire with God's love. As the reading from the letter to the Hebrews tells us, let us approach with a sincere heart and absolute trust, our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. This is the idea of praxis. Jesus says it in the gospel, doesn't he? Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So put into practice what you have learned. Theology is not simply an intellectual exercise. It's not simply, how should we say, academic acrobatics. It's something that leads us into praxis, into life. There's that famous line that's quoted by Saint, by not Saint, but Urs, um, Hans Urs von Balthasar in his study of Maximus the Confessor, a quote from Maximus the Confessor, talking about theology as an academic discipline when it's not accompanied with praxis, practice, putting it into action. And Hans Urs von Balthasar quotes Maximus the Confessor with these rather terrifying words. Theology without praxis is the theology of the demons. It's like faith without love. It's the faith that rules in hell, Maximus the Confessor says, reflecting on those words from the letter of James. Even the demons believe and tremble. So studying theology begins with faith, but it should inflame our hearts to love that it's expressed in praxis. And what is this praxis? Well, it's the praxis of prayer. We can't study theology, really, if we're not people of prayer. Another quote from one of the Greek fathers, Evagrius of Pontus, if you're a theologian, you pray truly. And if you pray truly, you're a theologian. Theology requires praxis, the praxis of prayer, but also the praxis of good works, of engagement in society of trying to transform the world around us into something more beautiful, more human, more worthy of God. So first, faith as the basis of theology. Second, theology as requiring praxis. And third, theology as a way, a hodos, that leads us to wisdom, to wisdom. Sunday, brothers and sisters, is a feast the solemnity of Pentecost, the descent of the fire of God's love on the apostles gathered around Our Lady, and the first of those gifts that are that is received on Pentecost, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, is the gift of sapientia, the gift of Sophia, the gift of wisdom, wisdom, which is so important in our time. This is the third point about theology. Theology is a hodos, the way, the way of Jesus, the unveiling of the mysteries that leads us to wisdom. What is wisdom? Our Holy Father Francis reflected on wisdom nine years ago when he was in the middle of his catechesis on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Francis said, wisdom is precisely this. It's the grace of being able to see everything with the eyes of God. What a beautiful line. To see everything with the eyes of God. And doesn't that completely corroborate those first two points that we're making? Faith as a basis of theology. Praxis as required by theology. Wisdom as a result of theology. Wisdom is the grace of being able to see everything with the eyes of God. Francis says, to see the world, to see situations, circumstances, problems, everything through God's eyes. This, Pope Francis says, is wisdom. 
Sometimes, he says, we see things according to our own liking or according to the condition of our heart, with love or with hate or with envy. No, the Pope says, that's not God's perspective. Wisdom is what the Holy Spirit works in us so as to enable us to see things with the eyes of God. And that is what theology ought to be giving us, the gift of wisdom. So the Father went on to say, we must ask the Lord to grant us the Holy Spirit, to grant us the gift of wisdom, that wisdom of God which teaches us to see with God's eyes, to feel with God's heart, to speak with God's words. And so with this wisdom, let us go forward, the Pope said. Let us build our family, let us build our church, and we will all be sanctified. Finally, in this Mass, we think about Our Lady, who is mentioned, of course, in our Gospel. Mary kept all these things in her heart. We see the shepherds going in haste to Mary, in whose lap we see wisdom. She is the Sede Sapientiae. She's the seat of wisdom, the chair of wisdom. She's the one who gives us wisdom, and she's also the one who points us on the way to wisdom. Always, Our Lady of the Way, we celebrate today, Santa Maria de la Strada, that image of Our Lady which was so greatly loved by Ignatius of Loyola and his early companions. The idea of Our Lady pointing us, directing us on the way, on the hodos. And of course, we think also of those Greek and Russian icons, that iconographic depiction of Mary holding the child Jesus at her side and pointing to him as the hodos, those images of Mary which we call Mary the hodegritia, same word, hodos, sunodos, Mary, Our Lady, sede sapientia, sede sapientiae, pointing us towards Jesus. So, those of you who are finishing today your theological studies, your studies are concluding today, but your theological education does not stop. If you want to be a man of prayer, you must be a theologian. If you want to be a woman of wisdom, you must be a theologian. You must allow that gaze, that desire, that penetrating gaze to always be at work in your heart, always following the hodos with your brothers and sisters in this sunodos, this synodal way towards the kingdom of God, which we approach in and through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our way, our truth, and our life. So, dear graduates, all receiving degrees today, I congratulate you. I thank you for your witness. I encourage you to go out, spread the good news of Christ, show people the way, who is Jesus. Yes, all rise for the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray to God that all our deeds, thoughts, and words may be guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit. For every petition, let us say, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Universal Church, may Easter inspire us to begin a new era where truth can open the way to peace, where welcome can be offered to all those in need, where listening can bridge all divisions, where love and understanding can fill all emptiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, we pray for God's continued guidance on our Holy Father as he continues to undertake the mission of shepherding, stewarding, and renewing the flock through these turbulent times. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed vision of who we are within the church and in the world. May suffering anywhere unite us in empathy and compassion. May we offer help and hope to those who live in despair, the poor, the hungry, 
those displaced by war, the abused, the persecuted, and forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For governments. May governments and people of every nation welcome immigrants, reject violence, resolve conflict peacefully, find answers to the climate crisis, and discover the best ways to foster reconciliation and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of healing, may our wounds of body, mind, and spirit enable us to become instruments of new life and hope to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our graduates, we pray that the Holy Spirit may guide our graduates in whatever mission they might be sent. May they find comfort from our LST communities, continued embrace and support as a journey through a life of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Praise and Lord, hear our prayer. For the many needs we hold in our hearts, for those who are sick, dying, and grieving, let us pray to the Lord. Praise and Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, may your Holy Spirit continue to inflame us with passion to follow your will, and in doing so, be closer to you and your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Peace be seated. Keep by the gifts we bring to you. All the of the earth receive a new. Take and bless the lower work of the lower. Receive by these gifts at your command. And then moon and earth and wind and rain. All the worlds contained in every grain. All the trees, human come. We are, we bring us bread and walk. The bread and wine are our simple. The living presence of the Lord. Best and broken shed was the Lord of All of the sacred best will be. Is spread and why you receive more. Now our deepest thirst you satisfy. We by this bread you sanctify. Draw the world for you to receive more. Sanctify the gifts we bring to you. Now see of the earth receive a new. Take and bless the work of our earth. Christian boy, it's this at your command. Then food and earth and wind and rain. All the worlds contained in every grain. All the toil and dreams of human thought. All we are, we bring and spread and fall. The bread and wine are our symbol. 
sacred bread will feed this bread and wine in Christy Father stand our deepest thirst you satisfy we spread you Draw the world for you to receive all. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, this offering of our humility which we bring you with joy as we commemorate the Blessed Virgin Mary. And grant, we pray, that it may be for us who are joined to the sacrifice of Christ, our consolation on earth and our eternal salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Please me. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Please stand. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. And with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh, 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Oh, <laughs> 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 Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant, grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety while we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. She's Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. It is sorrowful. In the evening, our Lord is our strength. In Him, our righteous support. In Him, our Lord, our power. Dogs not praying in our way, and the corn says, The emptiness in our hearts, and the love is in he is a lesson. In the are we just in honor? In the it's Let us know our we just in our Ni <laughs> Amen. <laughs> 
Let us all stand. Let us pray. By this Paschal Sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that we who honor the memory of the mother of your Son may show forth in our mortal flesh the life of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles J. Brown, will now bless the diplomas and medallions. God, our loving Father, giver of all success and glory, bless these diplomas, certificates, and medallions, fruits of the years of study and reflection which they embody. Graciously help these graduates to put into practice the ministerial formation they have attained for your greater honor and glory and for the service of their fellow human beings. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So concluding with the final blessing, I want to thank everyone who participated and prepared this beautiful liturgy. I've come from the nunciature with my assistant, Father Rick Marpa, from the Archdiocese of Palo, but also with Abbot Enrico Africa, a former professor here at LST. So it's a joy to be with the two of them and with all of you this afternoon, especially those of you who are receiving your diplomas and degrees. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Eucharist has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Just a short announcement. Before the final song, we will have a break to prepare for the second part of our celebration, the commencement exercises at 4.30 p.m. The area for vesting of togas for the graduates will be in the third floor SIB classrooms. LST faculty and guests will vest in the LST library. The bell will be rung to gather us all again here in the oratory. Sing <laughs> We are both to love tenderly. We are both to serve one and many quest of celebrating peace to come back for a picture in the third show. So we invited the time celebrating peace for our souvenir with the noon show. So we mercy to fear beyond God. So we hope for the hopeless, so hatred and blindness will be no more. We are just in this, we are both to love tenderly. We are both to serve one another, to walk on the end Sing, sing a new song. Sing of the great when all will be one God, and we'll walk in each other as sisters and brothers united in We are born to last just as we are born to tenderly. We are born to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. We are one another. To walk humbly with God.
Please remain standing for the invocation to be led by Mr. Michael Jason Liberatore, candidate for graduation of PhD in theology. Let us remember that we are always in the presence of our God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of joy and hope source of all that we have and all that we are becoming. We offer deep gratitude to you during this time of our graduation. Your spirit of wisdom has empowered our work and discipline and allowed our desire to encounter you through your incarnate word and has nourished us with greater knowledge, depth, and insight. As we prepare to walk across this stage to receive our diplomas, we imagine your loving gaze upon us as we complete this stage in our continuing journey in living your mission for us. We pray in thanksgiving for our families, benefactors, congregations, dioceses, and communities who have sacrificed and worked for this hopeful moment. Pray with much appreciation for our professors, formators, superiors, bishops, and administrators who have challenged, cared for, and crafted us along this academic journey. We pray in admiration for those around us, our fellow students and our classmates, who have taught us more about friendship, collaboration, and sharing, and about what it truly means to be part of a pilgrim people seeking you and your will for us. May our communion with one another during this time of academic formation remind us that we are truly united in our diversity, equal in our dignity, and each of us essential for living Christ's mission as one body, the Church. We recall your faithfulness, Lord, through our many challenges and accomplishments. We look ahead to the next steps in our lives as workers in your vineyard, conscious of the seriousness of the work before us and the many snares and difficulties that will inevitably appear. May your love strengthen us to resist the temptations of greed, laziness, pride, and envy as we live your mission. May your grace continue to sustain us amid anxiety and fear that we may remain encouraged about laboring with you as you desire us to labor. May your spirit be present and guide us as we unfold the next chapters of our lives. 
Help us to enliven hope in the world and commit fully to helping make your kingdom present. And may our celebration today give us a taste of the immense joy and happiness that we seek in the fullness of your presence. We offer all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We invite the Vice President for Academic Affairs of the Loyola School of Theology, Father Rogel Anisito L. Abais of the Society of Jesus, for some introductory remarks before the distribution of diplomas. Ladies and gentlemen, on this 24th day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2023, in the presence of the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, Most Reverend Charles J. Brown, LST administrators and faculty, religious superiors and guests, candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees, baccalaureate in sacred theology, licentiate in sacred theology, and doctorate in sacred theology, and recipients of the various diplomas. I declare these commencement exercises officially convened. Welcome to the 24th commencement exercises of Loyola School of Theology as an ecclesiastical faculty. The ecclesiastical degree baccalaureate in sacred theology will be conferred on 63 candidates, the licentiate in sacred theology on nine candidates, and the doctorate in sacred theology on one candidate. STB class valedictorian of 2023, seminarian Eduardo Miguel Florentino Ramirez, of the Archdiocese of Manila, summa cum laude, now deliver his valedictory address. Most Reverend Charles Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, most Reverend uh, Father June Virai, Father Eric Isebio, Father Rogel Abais, Sister Annie Ko, RVM, our LST administrators, professors, and staff, our formators and co formants from the different religious houses and seminaries. Those watching online and through media recording, dear benefactors, schoolmates, family, friends, good afternoon. Make space for the awesome. This is my message for you today. Never have I dreamed that I would be standing in front of you delivering this valedictory address. The only prayer I had during my comprehensive exams was, Lord, please do not make me say anything heretical. I think that prayer was small compared to the awesomeness of God's plans. Make space for the awesome. Speaking in front of you today is not only a privilege, but more so a responsibility, a humbling task to speak to the batch and for the batch. So allow me as the first order of business to acknowledge these men and women before you who have spent years of hard work and sleepless nights over many papers, oral exams, quizzes, canvas modules, Ad audiendas exams, comprehensive exams, and the final exams of Father Mananzan. Sikat talaga. 
<laughs> Congratulations, dear batchmates, for an awesome job. You deserve this. And let's please give them a big, big round of applause. Today, too, is the Feast of Mary under the titles Help of Christians and Our Lady of the Way. This is a very special date for me as I am both a Bosconian and now a graduate here in the school named after St. Ignatius of Loyola. I give thanks to God for allowing me this milestone on Mary's feast. I have a confession to make. Is that okay? When the announcement for valedictorian was made, I was on retreat with my classmates from San Jose Seminary. Shout out to my Hugo batchmates and all the community of San Jose Seminary. Hey, San Jose! That was a silent retreat, which meant no phones, no internet, just prayer. But that fateful Monday, just after silence was declared, I was in my room and I casually took out my phone and I gave in to the temptation. I told myself I'd better check for last minute emergencies. So I turned on my internet data and in a flash, messages from dozens of people started tapping in. Congratulations! I thought I won the lottery, but there it was, the announcement from LST. I was shocked, happy, sad, afraid, killing, all at the same time. I put my phone down immediately. I wanted to shout and jump and cry, but I could not. Do you know that, how hard that was? I went out of my room as if nothing happened. The next day, our retreat director officially made the announcement to the class. And of course, I pretended to know nothing. <laughs> and to quote my brother, Josefino, I told myself, Gracia lang talaga, kapatid. <laughs> Why am I sharing this? Because in the next five days of our prayer, God really disturbed me. Why me? What does this mean for me? How should I receive this? Then in one of my conversations with my spiritual director, she told me something that put me in place. She said, what is the difference between humiliation and humility? And she said, Humiliation, sometimes called abasement or false humility, is putting yourself down or letting oneself be put down for the sake of smallness. Humility, on the other hand, is acknowledging your small place because you are standing in front of something awesome. And we, when we are confronted with this grace, we cannot help but feel what Peter felt in front of Jesus and say, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. I say my message again. Make space for the awesome. I can be a very proud person. Someone who can be so full of himself. I am used to big events programs, public speaking, and inside and outside of LST, I can tell you of achievements which I can boast about. But because I can be too full of my own self, I can think that the one who is awesome is me, and not God. And that would be very dangerous, my dear friends. And in the same way, when we rely too much on our own intelligence, talent, skill, capacity to control, capacity to lead, capacity to influence, we can make it about ourselves. And we miss the God who is really awesome. 
When was the last time you stopped in awe because you realized that God the Father created you in His image and likeness? When was the last time you bowed in reverence because God the Son chose to be born like us in all things except sin? He lived like us, obeyed unto death, and raised again to new life. When was the last time you had goosebumps because God the Spirit continues to fill us with grace despite our sinfulness and our pride? My dear classmates, during our years in LST, we've learned all these biblical, systematic, canonical, liturgical truths. All of these would be lost if we missed the awesomeness behind all these. I hope after those grueling oral exams, term papers, and comprehensives, we carry with us a spirit of awe that we have such a God who loves us and desires only the best for us. Make space for the awesome. Can I make another confession? In 2019, I was nominated to be part of the student council here in LST. And that made me so angry and so afraid. Angry because at my age, I did not want to take on big leadership roles anymore and afraid because I felt coming student council was a thankless job. I wanted to back out. But to cut the story short, I was elected into the student council, resident, no less, and sorry to boast, but I think I had the best council I needed at that time. Love your own, of course. Sister Ancila from Papua New Guinea, Nyat from Vietnam, and two Filipinos, Ariel and Dave, who are with us today, and dozens of schoolmates who generously served with us in different committees. In hindsight, if I had backed out and not made space for the autumn, I would have missed to see that in LST are the kindest, most generous, most joyful people from our school administrators, professors, the staff, and the workers, maraming maraming salamat po. Ilakpakan po natin ang LST. But the autumn does not only come in good and happy times. Sometimes we too have to make space for the autumn, even if it comes in the form of pain and suffering. In March 2022, I lost my papa. He would have been the proudest dad in this room. Here with me are my mama, my lola and lola, my siblings, my aunts and uncles, cousins and some friends, all to whom I offer this and all so much gratitude. It was in LST during a class in canon law, that I received a video call from my brother in the U.S. saying that Papa was in critical condition. He was not sick. He and my mom were on vacation there, and before they could reach the airport to make their way back to Manila, he suddenly collapsed and did not make it to the hospital. Just like that. He returned to his creator. After, after that, I remember crying helplessly in my room. It all felt like a dream. But in the middle of all those tears, I suddenly felt a wave of peace, a calming embrace and presence as if he was there with me. He was now beyond time and space, and I felt him very alive. Immediately, the lectures of Father Arnel on eschatology and Father Manolin on the resurrection became very real for me. And that is where I anchor my hope even to this day. 
make space for the awesome. And so, dear friends, what happens after LST? Here we are equipped not only with knowledge for the mission, but hopefully also with the humility to make space for the God who we strive to know and love and follow each day. Thus, when we embrace who we are, our talents, gifts, weaknesses, failures, and at the end of the day offer them to God, we make space for the awesome. When we let go of our opinions and judgments about people in our community, in our family, so that they can become better people, we make space for the awesome. When we allow detours and uncontrollable events to surprise us in our work ministry, or when we return to our own countries, congregations and dioceses, and silently do the work asked of us, we make space for the awesome. When we continue to love and pray for even the most difficult people in our lives, we make space for the awesome. As I end, I have one last confession to make. During my comprehensive exams, instead of reciting my opening prayer, I sang a song. I don't know if that gave me extra points. Now you know what to do. <laughs> and so I also like to end with a song. When in the unknown future, we admit we've been too full of ourselves, when we realize that things are not going as we planned, when we are confronted with difficult people to love, or when we are simply caught by surprise by God's immense awesomeness, may we hear the Lord's voice gently, lovingly reminding us of these words. You've crowned the fears and the failures, you've struggled to hide the worthiness doubted beneath all that pride, the visions and dreams left behind. The future with so much in store. A gift those around you are so grateful for. And nothing can alter that forevermore. I choose you. I choose you. Do you hear me? I choose you. I will choose you if only you could see yourself the way that I do and know yourself the way I know you then love yourself as somebody who is wonderfully made. Wonderful they made I can Make space for the awesome Together with a deep devotion to Mary Help of Christians And Our Lady de la Estrada And we will see Because our Ad Marifem de Igriam Dalling LST, Dalling LST. Hey, Sinose! Maraming salamat po, and God bless you. Thank you, Brother Meigs.
our commencement speaker for this afternoon pronounced her first profession as a consecrated person in the Religious of the Virgin Mary, or RVM, in 1977, and made her final vows on, in 1984. She did her initial studies at the Sisters Formation Institute and the Mary Hill School of Theology in Quezon City, and thereafter sent for higher studies at the Catholic University of Louvain in Belgium, where she completed her Doctor of Philosophy in Religious Studies and Doctorate in Sacred Theology. From 2003 to 2011, she held several responsibilities within her own religious order. Chair of the RVM Education Ministry Commission, President of the RVM Educational Association of the Philippines, Member or Chair of the Board of Trustees of the RVM Colleges and Universities, President of St. Mary's College in Quezon City. After completing two terms in the RVM General Council in 2011, she was again elected to the RVM General Council as second general consultor in 2016. On the broader ecclesiastical scene, she has played a number of key roles, including member of the Secretariat during the Second Plenary Council of the Philippines in 1991, director of the Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines, or SEAP, in 2009, member of the SEAP Board until 2011, member of the Office of Theological Concerns of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conference from 2002 to 2012, and a founding member of the Catholic Biblical Association, or CBAP, and its president from 2014 to 2017. Since 2001, she has taught scriptures and theology at different schools of theology, seminaries, and institutes of formation in Northern Luzon, including the Wallala School of Theology. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm welcome to our commencement speaker, a native of Bilacan, a respected scholar of scripture, and a recognized leader in the church and in Catholic education, Sister Maria Anisha Cole of the Religious of the Virgin Mary. Thank you so much, Father Oliver, for that introduction. His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines. Bishop Emeritus, His Excellency, Most Reverend Antonio Tobias. Reverend Father Primitivo Virai, Provincial of the Society of Jesus in the Philippines. Reverend Father Enrico Eusebio, President Loyola School of Theology. Reverend Father Ruhel Abais, Vice President for Academic Affairs, members of the Board of Trustees, the administration, the staff, the faculty, and my colleagues, our dear graduating students, their parents and family members, friends, guests, and all, good afternoon. How good it is to be here. We are blessed to be gathered together for this graduation ceremony in this oratory of St. Ignatius, a sacred space that evokes in us so many memories of God's nearness, of joy in God's presence, of community and personal experiences of God's loving care and embrace. Today, we are making new memories as we celebrate the fulfillment of a dream. Among our many dreams, perhaps, some from the past, and now new and other dreams and hopes for the future. This is one moment in the journey of our life that calls us to relish with joy and gratitude what we have accomplished so far. For our graduates, 
It is the successful completion of your years of studies. And for our LSD administration, faculty, and staff, the achievement of our goals and the fulfillment of our vision and mission for this academic year. But more significantly, for whatever contribution we have given to all our students and to you, dear graduates, to your development in academic and professional competence for service and ministry in the church, to your personal identity and integration, to the deepening of your faith and growth in your spiritual maturity. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to the academic community of Loyola School of Theology. And all praise and honor be to God. Dear graduates, we, your mentors, companions, and friends, are proud of you. You give us reasons to thank and praise God for what you have become and what you are still becoming because of your learnings, experiences, and discoveries. We also thank you for allowing us to be part of your life. For we too have been changed by and in our encounters with you. As you sat in our classes, as we met along the corridors, in the library, in the canteen, and elsewhere. For whatever short conversations we had, even just for a smile and a look, an acknowledgement, simply though it might be, of one another's presence. No encounter ever leaves us unchanged in one way or another, for in its person we meet, we encounter the presence of God. For my part, I am especially grateful for being a member of the LSD faculty since 31 years ago, although I have taught here full-time for those number of years, I was teaching part-time. I am grateful to Father Eric for inviting me to teach again at LSD. So I came back 10 years ago after a hiatus of 10 years due to my other responsibilities in the RVM congregations. Strange how time flies. I also thank Father Eric for inviting me to speak to you, dear graduates, and this awesome assembly in this 24th LSD commencement exercises. Because of my experience of warm welcome and hospitality from Father Eric and his companions, and in recognition of the hospitality shown to us, the RVM congregation, by the members of the Society of Jesus from the time of Mother Foundress, Mother Ignacia, to the present, I chose to focus on the theme of hospitality as a send-off gift to you, our graduates. Hospitality is relevant to the synodal process initiated by Pope Francis. This synodal path, which solemnly opened last October 2021 in Rome and in the particular churches, is following a timeline that we lead to the Synod of Bishops on Synodality in October this year, a few months from now. The working document for the continental states entitled Enlarge Your Tent invites the readers to read it with, I quote, the eyes of the disciple who recognized it as a testimony to the path of conversion towards a synodal church. It encourages a prayerful and reflective reading of the document, and thus it contains a prayer with this petition. Help us to enter these pages as on holy ground. As an aside, do you not think that this is a very good prayer before any scripture reading? Help us to enter these pages 
as on holy ground. And what about praying this before reading the course notes of your professors? Allow me to read this short prayer. Lord, you have gathered all your people in synod. We give you thanks for the joy experienced by those who decided to set out to listen to God and to their brothers and sisters during this year with an attitude of welcome, humility, hospitality, and siblinghood. Help us to enter these stages as on holy ground. Come, Holy Spirit, may you be the guide of our journey together. The core of the prayer refers to the attitudes that support the synodal path. Welcome, humility, hospitality, and siblinghood. The importance of welcome and hospitality is highlighted in some parts of the document, particularly in this statement. I quote, the vision of a church capable of radical inclusion, shared belonging, and deep hospitality, according to the teachings of Jesus, is at the heart of the synodal process. End of quote. Hospitality, radical inclusion, shared belonging, are what the church at the heart of the synodal process should be able to offer. This document, which synthesizes the results of the previous consultation, recognizes the dynamic of home and exile, of belonging and exclusion, that constitutes the tension mentioned in the submitted reports. Home and exile. Belonging and inclusion are realities connected with the theme of hospitality. The concerns pertinent to these realities are very much present in our world today, in various places, at different levels, in many context situations and relationships. We wonder if understanding and practicing Christian hospitality can be a significant response to these challenges. I can only offer a few notes on hospitality that may lead us closer to the vision of the Synodal Church and help our graduates to navigate through the years ahead beyond the portals of this beloved institution. The origin of the word hospitality is said to be the Latin hospice, meaning host, guest, stranger. An etymological study of this word shows that hospice evolved from a combination of hypothetical Proto-Indo-European roots of gosti and poti. Gosti means stranger, guest, host, someone with whom one has a reciprocal duty of hospitality and poti meaning powerful. Other words that derive from hospice are hospice, hospitable, hospital, host, the giver of hospitality, and also hostage and hostel. Gosti also evolved into the Latin hostis and the Greek senos. Hostis, which means enemy, army, is also the origin of hostage, and hostile, hostia, sacrifice, host, the Eucharistic host. Senos is the interchangeable meaning of guest, host, or stranger. G-H-H tayo Jan, guest, host, stranger. The guest was the person with whom one had mutual obligations of hospitality. They were also the stranger, but the strangers were always feared because they could be hostile. Their intentions are often unknown, and they could be bearers of magical or mystical powers. The law or custom among the ancient Greeks of offering protection and hospitality to strangers is philosenos, literally love of strangers. Its opposite is xenophobia. 
drawing from the interplay of meanings of guest, host, and stranger, hospitality is understood to represent a kind of guarantee of reciprocity. One protects the stranger in order to be protected from him or her. Hospitality includes the ideas of reciprocity and protection, as well as fear, vulnerability, and risk. Hospitality is said to be characteristic of the Filipinos. Recent news laud and applaud the Filipino hospitality. You might have read it somewhere. Filipino hospitality is known worldwide. A distinct and joyous welcome replete with heartwarming feeling. From TCA Regional News, Chicago. Filipino hospitality makes mark on Taiwanese youth. A headline of the Philippine News Agency in August 2019. I have heard about and learned Filipino hospitality at home and in my school. I understood it to mean showing kindness, generosity, and respect to guests and warm welcome to strangers. I have not known the negative aspects of hospitality until my college years when we had a discussion on Filipino values. Considering how Filipino hospitality was used by the conquistadores and the colonizers to the natives. We hear stories then and now of betrayal and violation of Filipino hospitality, not only by the strangers, by the foreigners, but by fellow Filipinos themselves, even friends and relatives. Stories include violence against and harassment of the host by the guest and of the guest by the host. In the 1970s, some of you might not have been born yet, when the word hospitality came to be associated with a certain kind of service rendered by girls, in sauna baths and massage parlors, the negative connotation of the term casts a shadow on the significance of hospitality as a Filipino cultural value. Studies on hospitality also reveal that some codes of hospitality in certain cultures could be oppressive, that the practices of hospitality can make some groups or individuals subservient to the powerful that the hospitality of the rich towards the poor can hook the latter in an unequal reciprocity, where the poor owe the rich a debt of gratitude that can never be paid. And even some people are led to ethical dilemmas. Hospitality is an age-old practice going back to ancient times in the ancient Near Eastern world. Hospitality was shown by tending to sojourners, travelers, requiring shelter, nourishment, and protection. It was based apparently on the thought that those made vulnerable by lack of place were marginalized and in need, and that all human beings share a baseline dignity that is vulnerable when exposed. It was an economy of compassionate reciprocity to strangers. For one never knows when the person who is now the host, the giver of hospitality, might be the one in need of hospitality later. In the Hebrew scriptures, we find examples of hospitality. The book of Genesis presents a hospitable God who offers all the living creatures the new created world as a living space and the plants and trees as their food. A frequently cited example of hospitality is that of Abraham and Sarah, who show gracious receptiveness to three strangers. There are laws that specify concern and hospitality for strangers in the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Here is one from Leviticus chapter 19. If you have resident strangers in your country, you will not molest them. You will treat resident strangers as though they were native-born and love them as yourselves. For you yourselves 
were once aliens in Egypt. Other laws concerned the good treatment of the weak members of the society. In defense of himself, Job speaks of his hospitality. No stranger ever had to sleep outside. My door was always open to the traveler. The eschatological banquet described by the prophet Isaiah shows God as host, the hospitable one, who invites guests to enjoy God's hospitality. In Psalm 23, the psalmist acknowledges God as the good shepherd who offers hospitality by giving protection, provision of food and drink, shelter, home, and delightful rest. A study of hospitality in certain societies in the Greek and Roman civilizations of the ancient and classical worlds reveals the key influences that affect the attitudes towards hospitality in these societies, namely religious practices and beliefs, the advancement of trade and commerce, transactional expectations, social status, and the household a system of communication, and the fear of strangers. To offer hospitality seems inherent in human nature, and this trait is supported and reinforced by the societies and religious teachings. According to Derrida, not only is there a culture of hospitality, but there is no culture that is not also a culture of hospitality. All cultures compete in this regard and present themselves as more hospitable than the others. Hospitality, this is culture itself. The 20th century is said to be the beginning of modern hospitality era. The tourism boom in the Philippines in the 1970s led to the emergence of travel agencies and other tourism-related businesses, together with infrastructure development and the recognition of the need for a labor force in tourism industry. Colleges and universities began to offer tourism courses and hospitality certificate programs. Soon, there was a demand for university, university instructors and lecturers for tourism and hospitality management courses. Hospitality in this context is a service viewed as commercial transaction with certain conditions to be met. Commercial hospitality is a negotiated act between host and guest that includes the exchange between two or more parties of something of value in the context of agreed conditions, time, and place. As commercial hospitality dominated the meaning of hospitality, social science studies on hospitality as a cultural phenomenon might have receded into the background. But as academic studies and research on hospitality in the hospitality management disciplines progress, topics broaden to a consideration of hospitality beyond the commercial domain. Interests return to an analysis of hospitality not only as business but as cultural phenomenon. A three-domain model for understanding the broader conceptualization of hospitality is offered by Conrad Lasley. The three interrelated domains are social and cultural, private or domestic, and commercial. At a social and cultural level, varying degrees of obligation to be hospitable are required by different societies alongside duties and obligations on both guests and hosts. Studies of hospitality in social science disciplines deal not only with the relationship between host communities and tourists, but also with concerns and issues of migrants and asylum seekers. Problems arise, though, at this domain when guests and hosts do not share a common understanding of hospitality and what it entails. 
The second level is the private or domestic. Hospitality is learned by individuals in the home settings. It is in this setting that a baby first experiences hospitality. As she or he is welcomed by her or his parents and family. A more genuine and authentic hospitality is said to be developed on this private and domestic level. However, this may not always be the case, especially when family relationships are threatened by serious difficulties, misunderstandings, infidelity, domestic violence, and sexual offenses. A merging of domestic and private with that of the commercial may also happen on the private or domestic level when micro and small hospitality firms offer accommodation and nourishment within the home space. The industrialization of hospitality based on economic business models is represented by the commercial domain. Elements of the social and cultural and domestic levels may be interwoven in this domain to enhance effective competitive strategies. Such elements would be the values and emotional dimensions of host and guest relations and service interactions. Brotherton's definition of hospitality pertains to commercial hospitality. A contemporaneous human exchange which is voluntarily entered into and designed to enhance the mutual being of parties concerned through the provision of accommodation and or food and or drink. Considering these three domains of hospitality may be helpful in our understanding and practice of hospitality in a synodal church and in exploring what Pope Francis says in Fratelli Tutti about the sacred duty of hospitality. In number 90, the Pope emphasizes moving beyond ourselves. He says, significantly, many small communities living in desert areas develop a remarkable system of welcoming pilgrims as an exercise of the sacred duty of hospitality. The medieval monastic communities did likewise, as we see from the rule of Saint Benedict. While acknowledging that it might detract from the discipline and science of monasteries, Benedict nonetheless insisted that the poor and pilgrims be treated with the utmost care and attention. Hospitality was one specific way of rising to the challenge and the gift presented in an encounter with those outside one's own circle. The monks realized that the values they sought to cultivate had to be accompanied by a readiness to move beyond themselves in openness to others. The Pope says hospitality as one specific way of rising to the challenge of welcoming the poor and the pilgrims with utmost care and attention and recognizing the gift present in an encounter with people outside of our own circle. For our consideration and the different conceptualizations of hospitality in the social and cultural setting, in the private or domestic domain, and in the commercial world, to be relevant to our ecclesial and missionary context, we need a certain kind of reframing. Reframing has become popular in the 1960s. It means changing the frame in which a person perceives events in order to change the meaning. When the meaning changes, the person's responses and behaviors also change. An example of reframing is the red definition of hospitality. Taking into account studies on hospitality in other disciplines like sociology, theology, philosophy, anthropology, history, other social sciences, and the arts, Morrison and O'Gorman came up with a multifaceted definition. Hospitality 
represents a host cordial reception, welcome, and entertainment of guests or strangers of diverse social backgrounds and cultures, charitably, socially, or commercially, with kind and generous liberality into one's space to dine and or to lodge temporarily. Dependent on circumstance and context, the degree to which the hospitality offering is conditional or unconditional may vary. This definition encompasses the different domains, context, and possible conditions of hospitality. What has this multifaceted definition to do now with our Christian practice of hospitality? Let me offer five points for a Christian reframing of hospitality. Before I do so, I wish to invite you to rethink further and find new ways of understanding and practicing hospitality as a Christian virtue and value in relation to contemporary challenges. We have a lot of Jesuit resources to help us in this endeavor. I must confess that when I finished writing my talk yesterday, I wondered if I should at least include a note on St. Ignatius, his thought and practice on hospitality, or on Jesuit hospitality. This morning when I woke up, a thought popped in my head. Why not search what the Jesuits are saying about hospitality and Ignatian spirituality? So I followed my inspiration and I found several Jesuit websites featuring the topic of hospitality and Ignatian spirituality. I read some of them and found the post featuring a quotation from Henri Nguyen and excerpts from the book of Charles Fagan, very beautifully formulated, well articulated. I cannot improve on their formulation. If you have not read this, I suggest that you find time to read them. I also found a good example of how hospitality is analyzed and discussed in relation to a contemporary challenge. This article is entitled Jesuit and Feminist Hospitality. Pope Francis' virtue responds to inequality. Let me share this with you. Just the conclusion written, of course, by a woman, Kate Ward. Pope Francis, this is already a quotation, as we've seen, inequality is not simply a problem of unjust social systems. It is also a problem of virtue both an indicator of virtue deficits in society and a factor which contributes to their formation. France's solution to risk an encounter at the margins embodies the practice of the virtue of hospitality in a Jesuit and feminist key. This is the virtue demanded by our unequal world. End of quote. So let me now conclude with my five points. First, hospitality starts from the heart. A heart full of gratitude overflows with love that is willing to take risk and accept the other as other. This hospitality is founded on one's experiences of being loved and accepted by God, an experience of God's continuing hospitality in our life. God always welcomes us. May our experience of God's acceptance of who and what we are lead us to draw ever nearer to God. God will enable us to take risks and be courageous in offering hospitality when we are most reluctant to do so. Recall how the COVID-19 pandemic revealed the authentic hospitality of our health workers and frontliners. They are good examples of hospitality in action. Can we do the same or even more? Second, hospitality is a way of discipleship and mission. The gospel shows us how Jesus carried out his mission of proclaiming the reign of God. 
He invites everyone to the kingdom, shares meal with his disciples, offers healing and wholeness to the poor, the sick, the marginalized, forgives the sinner, even his enemies and persecutors. Jesus embodies God's hospitality to humankind. In any context or area of our mission, we can practice hospitality as a way of following Jesus in mission. But are we willing to be disturbed or interrupted from our busy schedule, taken out of our present occupation or work, to welcome a person who unexpectedly pops up in our presence, comes to us for whatever reason? Third point. Hospitality can be a means of transformation. Hospitality is an encounter of persons that leads to transformation. When a stranger is welcome, the stranger becomes transformed into a guest. The guests enjoy the provisions of some or all of the elements of hospitality, food or drink, a place to stay and rest, shelter, bed, safety, even entertainment. When the guest departs, the guest transforms into a changed stranger. In our act of hospitality, we are able to give the other an opportunity to be changed. If the experience is repeated and becomes continuous, the stranger who becomes a changed stranger can now become a friend. The host is likewise changed in the process. As the interaction continues, the host and the strangers or guests move beyond reciprocity to mutuality. When the roles of hosts and guests alternate back and forth, and the multiplicity of gifts are recognized, accepted, and appreciated, the social patterns of stratification and valuing are challenged. Kristen Paul says, Hospitality and gestures of solidarity cannot change unjust social systems, but they are a dimension of the transformation process as important for those with power as for those without it. If hospitality can transcend prevailing social boundaries, it can provide a context for the questions of justice to surface and be understood at a personal level. May hospitality transform us so that in our own way, we, we can become agents of transformation anywhere we go, anywhere we are, by mirroring and sharing God's hospitality to others. Fourth, hospitality focuses on the person of the other, not on the act. The hospitable is not so much concerned about what they will do or they will not do to please the guests or make them enjoy the host's hospitality. It is not about the action, but the person. Hospitality is openness to the person of the other, receiving them with openness, acceptance, and recognition, valuing them for who they are, listening to them, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, giving them respect and space to be themselves. The main concern is recognition of the person who comes in need or in a situation of vulnerability, or simply to find peace, rest, comfort, and consolation. Hospitality is giving space to someone to be his or her own self. Finally, the fifth, hospitality is basically acceptance and recognition of the other with respect and trust, whether they be strangers or visitors or guests, or within one circle or community. If we are able to develop the habit of hospitality after the mind and heart of Jesus our Lord, we will be able to accept everyone who comes our way with respect and love. It can happen that one is able to be hospitable towards others outside one's own community, while the members of his or her own community are deprived of that same person's hospitality. Well, hospitality moves us beyond ourselves, beyond our own circle or community. We are also called to show hospitality to the members of our community, especially the weak, the sick, and the elderly. In Amoris Leticia, Pope Francis says, Just as God asks us to be his means of hearing the cry of the poor, 
So to he wants us to hear the cry of the elderly. We must reawaken the collective sense of gratitude, of appreciation, of hospitality, which makes the elderly feel like a living part of the community. There might be others too in our community who long to feel that they are a living part of our community. Hospitality can be practiced anywhere, even here in MSP, in the classrooms, in workrooms, in offices, in our houses, and in our communities, in our convents, any place and context where we encounter people. And just as nature has been hospitable to us, we also need to show hospitality to nature, the physical environment. Hospitality to nature can inspire our efforts to heal the earth and sustain our commitment and responsibility to protect our environment and ecosystems. Perhaps nature has been crying out to us, calling us to be hospitable to our natural environment so that it can continue being hospitable to us to sustain our life in the planet. When I entered the novitiate, I read and learned about Marian hospitality in our RVM custom book and experienced it in the RVM culture. For about two decades now, I sell them here, this Marian hospitality in our convents. The practice continues, but perhaps we need to reclaim it and promote it once more with a new and enlightened understanding of what hospitality is all about as an important legacy of Mother Ignacia, our foundress. In our Blessed Mother's Yes, we find her great act of hospitality. She welcomed Jesus to be born of her. She might not have known the risk of being Jesus' mother, but the Holy Spirit gave her the protection and courage she needed to accept the reality of God's love pouring into her whole being. Mary followed Jesus in his ministry and up to the cross, sharing in Jesus' hospitality to all. And as Jesus offered forgiveness to all, Mary too shares in forgiving. Upon receiving the gift of the Spirit after Jesus' resurrection, Mary and the community of the disciples of the risen Lord were of one mind and one heart. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own but they had everything in common, and they were together persevering in prayer. As hospitality starts from the heart, let us be in touch with this hospitality deep within us, a hospitality sustained by the love of Jesus as we follow him in discipleship and mission, a hospitality that can radiate and mirror God's love and hospitality to others. May our Blessed Mother teach us how to live the spirituality of hospitality in action as she accompanies us in our continuing journey to proclaim the love of God, which has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Thank you for your hospitable listening and thank you for your hospitable clapping. Thank you, Sister Annie. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now present the candidates for graduation to the President of Loyola School of Theology. Candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees will please stand. Reverend Father, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees, baccalaureate in sacred theology, licentiate in sacred theology, and doctorate in sacred theology. 
since the candidates for graduation here presented have fulfilled all the requirements of their programs, I ask that you accept and admit them to the respective ecclesiastical degrees they have merited. By virtue of the authority vested by the Dicastery for Culture and Education in Loyola School of Theology, I accept the candidates presented for the respective ecclesiastical degrees and do hereby admit them to the degrees with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The candidates for graduation who have been admitted to the ecclesiastical degrees are requested to put on the medallion to which the degree entitles them. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now read the names of the graduates who will receive their diplomas from the President. Recipients of the first cycle, Ecclesiastical Degree, Baccalaureate in Sacred Theology. Rene Donting Adorable of the Fathers of the Sacred Heart. An Sang Yong, Kun Laude. Francis San Juan Ataiza of the Sacred Heart Fathers. Amen of the Society of Jesus. Chester Will Guerrero Balbuena, Diocese of Marbel, Cum Laude. Bernadine J. Dion Balmores Palito, Diocese of Aguilar. Arnold Alvin de la Peña Valosa. Lao Viet Hung of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit. Vincent Ray Maguate Daud, Diocese of Marbel, Tung Laude. Bernhard Mutapa de Asis of the Congregation of the Passion. Ronel Baldon de los Reyes of the Society of St. Paul. Dean Van Chong of the Society of Jesus. John of Luan of the Fathers of the Sacred Heart. Joseph Patrick Gison Echeverria of the Society of Jesus. Ernito Galan Espera Jr. of the Order of the Pious Tools. Juan de Tupas Eturma of the Congregation of the Passion. Joel Tesoro Hernandez of the Ministers of the Intern. Jose John Barros Cuertes, Diocese of Chacolod, Magna Cum Laude.
Hang Bang Song of the Fathers of the Sacred Heart. Virgilio Jan Rico Han Dumon of the Lord of St. Augustine. Gerson Villaluna Hiponia Cum Laude. Stephen Ekal Ierio of the Missionary Community of St. Paul the Apostle. Isidore Kawaya Idumbo of the Siberian Missionaries, Summa Cum Laude. Cosme Carlo Almasol Lacang of the Society of Jesus, Summa Cum Laude. Geraldine de Bumbal Lanid of the Diocese of Tagbilaran, Magna Cum Laude. Mark Darrell Rosalro Laranang of the Diocese of Tagum, Magna Cum Laude. Lehud of the, of the Priests of the Sacred Heart. Mark Vincent on Ada Madronero of the Augustinians of the Assumption. Gregorius Pur Nagara of the Siberian Missionaries. Nien Pui Kui of the Society of Jesus. Nyan Min Bo of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary. Nyan Ban Wong of the Society of Jesus. Nyan Ban Tong of the Priest of the Sacred Heart. Zacchaeus of God of of the Missionary Community of St. Paul the Apostle, Tun Laude. Joseph Talaok Sanaditon of the Augustinians of the Assumption. Sylvester Tatufer Paul of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate. Aldrin Carlo Mercado Perez of the Order of the Pious Truths, Cum Laude. Pan Chu Song of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit. Peter Bernal Pocket. Eduardo Miguel Florentino Ramirez of the Archdiocese of Manila, Summa Cum Laude. Ian Sawayan Ronquillo of the Missionaries of Our Lady of La Salle. Etiel Canlas Rojas of the Augustinians of the Assumption, Cum Laude. Raki Mabanta Rojas of the Priests of the Sacred Heart. Julie Padayodog Sabrero of the Sons of St. Anne. Joshua Paul Calica Sarden Sardenas Sadernas of the Diocese of Novaliches, Magna Cum Laude.
Cello Jan Lasapin Sarno of the Archdiocese of Patabato, Tum Laude. Ronel Ludvitas of Toriano of the Society of St. Paul. Tanha of the Society of Jesus. Stevin Thomas of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate Tum Laude. Nan Kao Kong of the Priests of the Sacred Heart Tum Laude. Ran Pilam of the Society of Jesus Magna Cum Laude. Arvin de la Cruz Uriat of the Diocese of Tagum. Christian Joseph Arenas Valles of the Congregation of Jesus and Mary. Jaime Gem Tamayo Arona, Archdiocese of Salo, Magna Cum Laude. Ariel Bardev Danes of the Augustinians of the Assumption, Cum Laude. Michael George Madela Villasis, Diocese of Navaliches, Summa Cum Laude. Vutai Diep of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit. And Hensley and Galan Ibanez of the Society of Jesus, Magna Cum Laude. We will also award the Baccalaureate of Sacred Theology to graduates from LST affiliates in their respective schools. St. John Vianney Theological Seminary in Cagayan de Oro City, Robert Angelo Gapol Alesna, Jason Agbu Axol, Marlon Paurum Hardin, Kirsten Barrientos Lamparas, Ian Cagalawan Pamisa, Joben Lobregas Planteras, and Devin Ray Enot Serondo. On Saturday, we will award the degrees to the students of St. Joseph Jesuit Scholasticate in, in Saigon, Vietnam. Ritehni S.J. Do Antoine of the Congregation of the Passion Do Ban Liu of the Society of Jesus, Duan Ban Sin of the Augustinians of the Assumption, Ha Po Pui of the Society of Jesus, Ho Si Duan of the Congregation of the Passion, Lu Ngoc Nung of the Ministers of the Infirm, Ngo Ban Son of the Society of Jesus, Nguyen Kong Tan of the Order of Carmelites, Nguyen Ki Ki of the Minister of the Infirm, Nguyen Kuang Pui of the Society of Jesus, Nguyen Tian Tai of the Minister of the Infirm, Nguyen Ban Kong Kong of the Congregation of the Passion, Nguyen Ban Duk of the Society of Jesus, Nguyen Ban Tam of the Order of Carmelites, Nguyen Ban Te of the Society of Jesus, Nguyen Ban Trung of the Minister of the Infirmed, Pam Huan Dang, and Pam Trung of the Order of Carmelites. Recipients of the Second Cycle Ecclesiastical Degree Licentiate in Sacred Theology Biblical Theology Father Joseph Tamdi Kare of the Order of Augustinian Discalced Father Dexter Mangopa Udanciano of the Rogationist Cum Laude 
Spirituality and Leadership Father Jesu Rajan Lambert Julio Magna Cum Laude Systematic Theology Sister Tran T. Y. N. of the Order of Preachers Magna Cum Laude Father Yun Hong Ming of the Blessed Korean Martyrs Cum Laude The recipient of the third cycle ecclesiastical degree doctorate in sacred theology with a dissertation entitled The Passover of the Bridegroom Messiah A Biblical Theology on the Nuptial Language of Jesus' Passover in the Fourth Gospel Father Adonis Galangam Saklolo of the Archdiocese of Manila Tuma Cum Laude Vice President for Academic Affairs will now announce the candidates for graduation of the civil degrees. The candidates for graduation of the civil degrees took their courses at Loyola School of Theology under the Theology and Minister Pro Ministry Program of the School of Humanities of the Ateneo de Manila University. They will be conferred their degrees at the university graduation. The following professional civil degrees will be conferred on 22 candidates of Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry and the Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry with the following concentrations, Family Ministry and Counseling and Spirituality and Retreat Directing. Master in Family Ministry and Counseling, Master in Pastoral Ministry, and Master in Spirituality and Retreat Directing. The following academic civil degrees will also be confirmed. Master of Arts in Theological Studies on three candidates and the Doctor of Philosophy in Theology on one candidate. As I call the names, I request those called to stand to face the assembly and to take a bow. Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, Cielo jo John Lasapin Sarno, Archdiocese of Cotabato. Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, Family Ministry and Counseling, John Chester Flo Flo Flores Clenius Jr. of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart. Christian Joseph Arenas Vales of the Congregation of Jesus and Mary. Master in Family Ministry and Counseling, Mark Daryl Rosauro Laranang, Diocese of Tagum. Joseph Talaok Panagiton, Agustinians of the Assumption. Stephen Thomas, Oblates of Mary Immaculate. Master in Pastoral Ministry, Gian Flores Dayao. Ronel Baldon de los Reyes of the Society of St. Paul. Ruel Tesoro Fernandez of the Ministers of the Infirm. Stephen Ecal Ierio of the Missionary Community of St. Paul the Apostle. Leo Jen de Gala Lumogdan Mark Vincent Onrada Madronero of the Agustinians of the Assumption Zacchaeus Okot Odor of the Missionary, Missionary Community of St. Paul the Apostle Romeo Rivera Otero II Eduardo Miguel Florentino Ramirez, Archdiocese of Manila Ian Poayan Romquilio of the Missionaries of Our Lady of La Salle. Sister Georgi Sudiri Silorio of the Ijas de Jesus. Tran Lam of the Society of Jesus. 
Master in Spirituality and Retreat Directing, Michelle Marquez Abajo. Master of Arts, Major in Theological Studies, Moral Theology, Teofilo Jovan Santiago Fujeda III. Master of Arts, Major in Theological Studies, Pastoral Theology, Sister Roselle Joy Andasan de Vera of the Religious of the Assumption. Master of Arts, Major in Theological Studies, Systematic Theology, Father Adrian Paul Homento Colmenares of the Society of Jesus, Father Lloyd Vargas Sapio of the Society of Jesus. Doctor of Philosophy in Theology, Systematic Theology, Mr. Michael Jason Littratore. We congratulate you for successfully completing your civil degree programs in the Theology and Ministry Program at the School of Humanities of the Ateneo de Manila University through Loyola School of Theology. Vice President for Academic Affairs will now call on the recipients of the non-degree diplomas. We will now award the following diploma to 38 students who have completed their respective programs, the diplomas in Basic Pastoral Ministry, Integral Ecology, Integral Vocational Accompaniment, Jesuit Junior Aid Studies, Pastoral Care of Migrants, pre-theology studies, and theological studies. As I call their names, I request those called to come forward to receive their diplomas from the President. Basic Pastoral Ministry Jovi Reyes Desquez Maria Consuelo Gaspar Trinidad Integral Ecology Jody Reyes Desquez Sister Genevieve Gachalian Lazaro of the Order of Preachers. Sister Marilyn Tohino Leano of the Sisters of the Holy Spirit. Father Melvin Acosta Ordanes, Diocese of Pasig. Sister Euphemia Andong Tomado of the Ijas de Jesus. Sister Norma Landicho Serdone, the religious of Mary Immaculate. Integral Vocational Accompaniment. Sister Teresa Diano Capatania, Siervas de Jesus. Sister Maricar Moya Carillo, Daughters of Charity. Father Jose Distal Conson Jr. of the Order of Augustinian Discals. Sister Claudine Loris de Chavez Esguera, MSHFJ. Sister Marietis, Capitan of the Religious of the Virgin Mary. Sister Maria Edita Dagala Lungay of the Religious of the Virgin Mary.
Jesuit Generate Studies Bonifacio Bano Le Ribeiro João Francisco de Jesus Pareto Jean André Tapsa de Paz James Ryan Colance Seneriches Wake Eyes One Mutton Pastoral Care of Migrants Father Anil Sosgur of the Archdiocese of Ranchi, India Sylvester Tafuko Paul of the Oplates of Mary Immaculate Pre-Theology Studies Rex Francis Bailon Cause of the Society of Jesus Gerard Joseph Gonzalez Enriquez of the Society of Jesus Gao Han Chin of the Society of Jesus Joseph Curry of the Tahanan ng Puso David Loyola Manuchag of the Society of Jesus Nyan Buikan of the Order of Carmelites this past J. Marpal Olivar of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart Erwin Tusoy Rosique of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart Franco Boom of the Orders of Carmelite Discuss Wang Tetsun of the Society of Jesus Jin Wei Peng of the Society of Jesus Theological Studies Sister Chu Ki Lin of the Religious of the Assumption We will now recognize 35 students who have completed the program's Catholic Safeguarding and Professional Diploma in Family Ministries. They will be awarded their diploma in their respective culminating activities. As I call their names, I request those called to stand to face the assembly and to take a bow. Catholic Safeguarding Emerita Ilagan Garon Father Henrico Satya Wenning Pangudi of the Society of Jesus Gemily Orilia Mesa Sister Nedi Balangan Nueva of Daughters of Charity Sister Maria Lani Magtanong Saligumba of the Handmaids Father Warren Arapan Tagupa of the Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro the Transini of the Society of Jesus. Professional Diploma in Family Ministries. Maria Cristina Edmilao Ampil. 
Father Francisco Assisi Budiono, Carmeline Lois Asena de Guzman, Maria Janet Rebong de Guzman, Claire Magno de la Cruz, Joan Marie Mutok Estrella, Jose Rafael Madamba Hernandez Jr., Michael Magkaling Haneo, Nanet Dimakulangan Kagawan, Emily Templo Lam Lambio, Victorine Chan Lim, John De La Cruz Melad of the Society of Jesus, Maria Carmina De Lo Rosario Mercado, Maria Lourdes Yu Morales, Michael Masilungan Morales, Sister Nedi Balangan Nueva, Daughters of Charity, Nyen Hui Kui of the Society of Jesus, Sister Lea Robles Pama of the Daughters of Charity, Marisa Caluyong Pascual, Father Jacques Teben Patizea of the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, Remy Rose Labro Poblete, Mariflor Franz Pelayo Reyes, Blessing Joel Fidel Rivera, Sarah Jane Macasero Tumala, Andrea Chabelli de Vera Ventosa, Brian Niles Bautista Villamel, Catherine Untalan Vital, Aislin Liao Liao. This year, LST honors faculty members who have been teaching in LST for at least 10 years. May we call on the Vice President for Academic Affairs to present the honorees. Loyola School of Theology boasts of an impressive roster of full-time and part-time faculty composed of Jesuits, religious men and women, diocesan clergy and lay women and men who are outstanding not only in their respective fields of theological and ministerial expertise, but also in their commitment to church and country. Their names, including those of our distinguished professors emeriti, are listed in your graduation souvenir program. Four of our current teaching faculty have served LST for 10.5, 11, 20, and 20.5 years as of this current semester. This afternoon, we officially and most sincerely express our deepest gratitude to them for their dedication, loyalty, and commitment to LST. Father Peter Pohol of the Society of Jesus Moral Theology, 10.5 years. Dr. Cynthia Davino, Family Ministry and Counseling, 11 years. Father Eric Marcelo Hinilo of the Society of Jesus Moral Theology, 20 years. Dr. Antonia C., Family Ministry and Counseling, 20.5 years. We will now call, call on our President, Father Enrico Yusuabio Jr. of the Society of Jesus, to give the closing remarks. This will be short. What we are what we are about to conclude tonight is the 24th commencement exercises of LST from its establishment as an ecclesiastical faculty of theology in 1999. But earlier, in the 12th of July, 1965, the Provincial Superior of the Jesuits of the Philippines, Father Horacio de la Costa, with the authorization of the Superior General, Father Pedro Arupe, opened present school as an institute of philosophy and theology, incorporating within it the ecclesiastical uh, faculty of Sanos Seminary, 
am located in EDSA, then called Highway 54. Then after one, just one year, uh, one quarter in San Jose, in Highway 54, the school moved to the present site here, in Loyola School of Theology and Loyola House. At the time, there were only two, two, two theology students from first year to fourth year. First classes were held on September 18, 1965, with a group of Jesuit scholastics, some of seminarians, and some scholastic religious congregations, like the Oblates of Mary Immaculate. And eventually, Jesuit scholastics from Asia, from countries like China, Malaysia, Singapore, and India moved to Manila House and studied in LST in the 1960s. This LST has always been an international school of theology because of the global character of the Jesuit mission. Today, LST has grown to be an ecclesiastical faculty of 496 students, 198 of whom are international students, or 39.92% of our school community. And among our graduates tonight are 112 Filipinos and 62 international graduates coming from 19 countries around the world. So please be patient with me because as I did last year, I, I read out this list of countries from where our graduates come from. So let's start with Cambodia, Cameroon, China, Congo, Kinshasa, Fiji, India, Indonesia, Kenya, Korea, Lebanon, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Portugal, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, Timor Leste and USA. Did I forget a country? Vietnam, of course. Vietnam. I'm just joking, huh? Of course, how can I miss our Vietnamese brothers and sisters? And so tonight, um, we reflect on the most important uh, uh, reality of studying theology in an international context. Because this international context becomes a transformative experience, broadens horizons, deepens our understanding, and fosters a spirit of global citizenship. Here we engage in dialogue with students from religious, from diverse cultural backgrounds. Each person brings with him himself or herself various perspectives and experiences. So this rich variety enriches our understanding of theology and challenges, challenges us to embrace the complexity of the human religious experience. Dear graduates, as you continue your journey after LSP, I urge you to let your theological and ministerial formation be a catalyst for positive change in the church in accord with the vision of reform of our beloved Pope Francis. May you serve as strong foundations for dialogue and collaboration both within and outside of the church. May you be a source of hope and inspiration in an increasingly interconnected world. And finally, please do not forget to exchange email addresses and contact numbers with one another because sometime in the future you will find yourself in another part of the world for mission or for leisure like in Indonesia or Vietnam, Portugal or Kenya and you will remember that there is an LST graduate there can be around and make you feel at home as a most welcome LSD guest. Congratulations to the class of 2023. 
Thank you, Father President. Our new graduates in the XTB, XTL, XTD, and Diploma programs are now alumni of LST. We now induct them into the LST Alumni Association. Please refer to the last page of your commencement exercises souvenir. I now ask all the graduates to please stand to raise your right hand and to recite with me. All together, I, graduate of Loyola School of Theology in the year of our Lord 2023, realize that the advantages and opportunities of my formation are not for myself. It's in great part, they're a trust to me from my family, my school, my congregation, diocese, my people, and my God. In response to this trust, I humbly give myself, I give my support and interest as a member of the Loyola School of Theology Alumni Association to assist in improving its efforts to fulfill its mission to grow in its capacity for the service of the church in the Philippines in a cooperation with others, I will endeavor to repay this trust with the generosity of the great mother of God through the intercession of Mary, my mother. Dearest, dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to beat the wounds. Or not to seek the rest. To labor and ask me. Say. Amen. Please be seated. Vice President of Academic Affairs will now formally close these 24th commencement exercises of the Loyola School of theology. On behalf of the Loyola School of Theology community, we congratulate the graduates of the ecclesiastical degrees and the recipients of the various diplomas and their families, congregations, and dioceses. We congratulate as well all our students graduating with master's and doctoral degrees from the School of Humanities of the Ateneo de Manila University. We thank our commencement speaker, Sister Maria Anisha Ko, for joining us and for inspiring us in the pursuit of our mission in this challenging world. We thank His Excellency, the Most Reverend Charles Brown, for presiding and preaching at our baccalaureate mass and his presence at our graduation ceremonies tonight. Words are never enough to express our gratitude to all the faculty members as well as the staff of LST. We thank and congratulate Seminarian Eduardo Miguel Ramirez for the valedictory address. We also thank Mr. Michael Jason Liberatore for the invocation. Finally, we thank you all for joining us today on this happy occasion. We go forth on our mission, trusting in God's providence and your prayers. I declare these commencement exercises officially closed. Thank you again for sharing this occasion with us. A pleasant evening to everyone. May we now invite the entire LST faculty and all degree and non-degree graduates to come forward for our group photo.
graduates, graduates, attention graduates, please be careful with your diplomas because those are real diplomas and they cannot be replaced. So don't lose them. Wow. Difficult mission. Right, Anna. Just there, or? What? Okay. Nakalimutan na ni kasi, guys. Ay, yung parish, please.